All right, and welcome back to Pharaoh, A New Era. In this video, I wanna do just a real quick talk about trading and the things I've learned as it was requested and how I set my stuff up. So um, let's go ahead and take a real quick look at the Overseer Commerce. So it is always, almost always better to import a raw material than export a manufactured material, except for some luxury goods depending it doesn't really matter a whole lot because they're so close but typically things like if you look here flax if i wanted to import obviously i can't but if i wanted to import flax it's 54 versus 210 so if i was to import flax and turn it into linen myself that's a price save cut of 150 basically per item versus if i was to sell flax which is only 42 but I can sell linen for 160. So that being said, it's always better typically to export a manufactured goods and import the raw material, right? I mean, that's how it works. Somebody, somebody mines up or makes the raw material and then you turn it into a better good. Um, let's see here. So some other things to look at while we're on this menu is you can see I have my imports and exports manually set. My beer is set to export one over zero. I'm overproducing beer. I don't mind if it all gets sold. I'm not even using it in my city at all because I'm not evolving my housing. So I want it all gone. If I wanted to keep some for my housing, I would export one over, say, like a thousand. OK, I am sometimes over uh, depending on my harvest. I am way over crafting on barley. So I'll set it. I'm exporting one over 600. I'm saving enough to to keep my things going. You can set that higher to a thousand as well. Now, why is that different than, say, like exporting, sur uh, exporting surpluses? OK, so first of all, if you're on a mission, so like I had a subscriber who talked about the Timno Oasis, nobody was buying his wood. OK, nobody was buying his wood and it's just sitting there. He has all the trade routes open, everything. As soon as he put it to export one over zero versus exporting surpluses, it all went. So here's the thing. If you're not using a resource like at all, None of it's surplus because you're not using it. You have nothing that would use something like wood, which doesn't get turned into anything. OK, it's different than, say, gems, right, which has a manufacturer to it, such as jewelry. But he didn't have there on Timno Oasis. There are no shipyards that would use wood. So wood is kind of special in that way. So if you're having issues selling your wood, set it manuals, export when over zero. All wood that you have will disappear. OK, it'll be sold. If you want to hang on to it, say you're building a pyramid and um, you're in Biblos. There you go. You can export one over 500 or something like that. Obviously, this is gems, but I'm just saying for wood. Um, it is always better to manually set these than saying export went over import as needed. OK, so say I really wanted fish or uh, not fish. I'm sorry. Let's say I have fish on this map. I have a lot of fish. Say I really want some chickpeas. OK. And I set it to import as needed because I'm trying to get my houses evolve up to fancy residences and they need two types of food. Right. So if I go up here to my overseer of granaries and I look, we produce or import enough food for about two thousand four hundred thirty three people. I have one thousand five hundred people. If I'm telling it to import as needed and I'm trying to import um, chickpeas, it's not going to import anything because I don't need food. None of my people are hungry. I have room for an extra one thousand people. Right. But I'm trying to evolve those houses. So I would need to go over here. I would need to manually set it and I would manually set it to import to maintain like a thousand. OK. And then if you're going to do that, remember that they will not deliver to a granary. You need to set up a storage yard. So I would set up a storage yard. If it's a water trade route, I'd normally want it close to my dock, which I'm explain here next. And this this one only, I would tell it to only accept chickpeas. All right. So now we talked about that um, importing and exporting resources. When you're we got to remember this dock here, I found that a big difference between Pharaoh, a new era and the original Pharaoh is that in the original Pharaoh, if you had multiple docks, ships would see that one was full and they'd go to the next one. OK, and this one in my testing, it seems that they will only use one dock and they just wait and wait and wait. I need to do more testing on it, but so far that's what it seems. These docks will only send out one cart pusher. So if this ship pulls up and it says, hey, I want beer, go get it's going to go get the beer and go back. OK, 
Now, if it says, hey, I want, you know, linen and my linen was way over here, that one cart pusher would have to go all the way down here, get that linen and come back that and then the rest of the ships are waiting. So that can really delay your trading even by months. Sometimes those ships can sit there depending how far those cart pushers have to go. And if your city's really busy, you might not notice that. So always leave some space and set up warehouses that way you can sell close to your dock. And if it's a resource that you're splitting, say you're using beer and you're selling beer, but it's a distance from where you're storing it, you can tell it to get half. So I'll do that. So like, say we were, we were doing, let's clear this. Say we wanted to sell beer and papyrus out of this. Okay. So I would go to get all, I'd tell it to get half and papyrus. I would tell it to get all to get half. It will this worker from this storage yard will go and get papyrus and then come back and enough to fill half the yard. And he'll also do that for beer. So he can help keep this one replenished. But normally I always recommend having a single storage yard per resource. If it's a land trade route, it doesn't matter where it's in your city. They'll go get it themselves. This only applies to docks. All right. One last thing. Let's go ahead and talk about the world map. Um, so you can see here on this map, I am selling beer to Mindifer. Mindifer will only buy 2,500 beer per year. So from January to December, that's how much. In January, this will reset again. So keep that in mind if you're trying to sell a single resource to like one town. Say I was just trying to sell beer only to Mindifer. This can cap out and then I'm sitting there doing nothing. So it's, it's sometimes it's better to sell and then also import something like flax, turn it into linen and then sell that linen as well to diversify. But on this map, it's still an earning map and everybody wants to buy beer, as you can see there. Um, so that's one last thing to kind of look at. And they'll also sell. The same goes for selling. So if I needed a ton of copper, you know, or something, and only one person is selling it, this is all I'll get for the year. I can only get 2,500 copper for the year. So if I was burning through copper, making weapons and then selling weapons, and I was trying to tell my overseer of commerce to import 7,000 copper, right? Import to maintain. And we told him 7,000. That's not going to happen. There's only one seller selling 2,500 a year, unless I'm just not using it at all. And it's just sitting there. And one final thing about this window here is if you are, so you get a request from Pharaoh for um, beer. Okay. And we are selling beer as well. What I would do is you click stockpiling this resource right there okay so we want to not and then you can of course you can change this as well but you see it locks it you could also do do not trade and then you could also do stockpiling stockpiling should tell your bazaars as well not to buy it do not buy it and that's what that little jar means and if you're having trouble selling something make sure you don't have that jar clicked if you want to turn off a um if you're you're low on pot, you're low on workers. This isn't really for trading, but say you need more workers and you need to turn off something like and you had a bunch of granite yards that you're mining granite. Tell it right there and it'll disable all those granite yards and give you that population or that uh, workforce back. OK. And then one final thing, if you are trying to sell a resource that you're not going to use in this map. So like, say none of these houses have beer, right, because I'm not selling beer at all. So I always go into here. And I will tell my bazaars to not buy that. I only want them to buy fish and pottery. Okay. Because I like say on a map, I was importing linen and gems and luxury goods and stuff like that for a pyramid. And it all disappeared. It, my city wasn't, didn't need it, but my bazaars went and bought it all. And then I had to re-import it again, even though it was just for the monument. So just keep that in mind. Um, to do that. And also, if you have to give a gift to Pharaoh, Pharaoh will not accept it out of your granary. It has to be in a storage yard. So like I was giving Pharaoh gifts of fish in this one. So I have a, I have a granary of fish. And if I ever need to get more fish here, I could tell it to get all and then just tell this to accept. And you can see they will start transferring the fish there and I can go ahead and give it to Pharaoh. And assuming my people don't starve. So all right, guys, that was just a quick tutorial with a bunch of rambling about how to trade, but hopefully it helped. If you have any questions or if there's something that you really want to see um, or have any information on that maybe is not clear and I could do some testing, let me know in the comments below.
and I hope you like the video and thanks for watching.